Good afternoon, my friends. We are eagerly anticipating the arrival of Reason 6.5 with the new rack extensions and other new features. But before that gets here, I thought I would do another couple tutorials just showing you some useful techniques that um, you may find interesting. Now just to get you up to speed, Reason 6.0 was the one where they combined Reason and Record. So you notice my voice is coming in here. I can record audio tracks along with all of the virtual studio devices in Reason. And if you're not familiar with Reason, you probably are because it's been around for quite a while. Um, we can look at the back and it's just like a real studio. You have a bunch of different machines that you can plug or unplug as you want. You can arrange them and you can do interesting things by switching around the plug arrangement as you would, you know, experiment just like in a real uh, studio. It is a real studio that exists in virtual reality. And it can operate, you know, with your audio interface, your balance uh, audio interface, or some other audio interface like I'm using here. Uh, you know, it'll work with basically everything. You can use a hardware studio along with this software if you want. So you can blend virtual reality with normal reality. But uh, I digress. What am I going to show you right now? Well, in the rack extensions, which I am really looking forward to checking out, basically they are the first time that plug-in devices have been allowed in reason. But these are going to be very specially uh, tailored plugins, so they will work very smoothly with Reason. And as you know from your past experiences with other plugins, some plugins work smoothly and others don't. There, there can be some uh, conflicts, but they are aiming to take out the pain from the process and leave just pure inspiration. So. One of those plugins that I am looking forward to using is the beat repeat feature. You know, because I like to make IDM and electro and glitch styles where that sort of, uh, you know, repeating sound uh, thing often shows up. And there's going to be a special device for that. But before that ever arrived, I sort of uh, figured out on my own a way to get that type of sound and I thought I might just show it to you now because actually because Reason has uh, maintained well not backward compatibility but you can bring your sequences from previous versions up to the new versions and they work and then you can improve them with the new devices um, the techniques that I show you here will still be usable in version 6.5 and you can use both of the beat repeat methods if you want. So how am I going to do this? Well I like to start with the drum machines always because that's the backbone of the track. So let's get right into it shall we? Alright we are going to use the drum arpeggiator you ask, what is a drum arpeggiator? Well, it is an RPG-8, but I have connected it to the Kong drum machine. Now, why would I do that? Well, the thing about Reason is because it is like a studio, everyone's studio is connected up in their own special way. Everyone's virtual Reason studio can be hooked up in a special way, too. And this is a way that I often find useful to come up with interesting ideas. So, instead of programming my beat on the Kong directly, 
I'm going to program it into the drum ARP track. I set up a uh, backing beat there with uh, Dr. Rex. You know, it's better than having a click track or something like that. So what I'm going to do now is, on my drum ARP, and I'll expand these windows. Everything is very adjustable on Reason. It's great. So, got to find where the notes are. And why is it on beat? That's because it's going through the arpeggiator. Isn't that great? I know this is kind of non-standard, but it's an interesting way to come up with a beat. Why am I leaving extra long bars? You will see. So. I have a pretty good sound there, but why have I been using this arpeggiator all along? I mean, why is it necessary? Here's the trick. Say you want to, using the same beat pattern, suddenly change up the beat in the middle of the track. Makes it sound a little bit different. There's a weird breakdown there on the triplets. Are now the beat is simpler because I have cut it down to a shorter range of arpeggiations. Or bring it down to very low value. It's almost like a breakdown because hardly any of those hits go through. Turn it up very high and it'll be like an IDM roll. You gotta be careful with this. Maybe just turn it up for a moment, and you can set this in the automation. But for now, we're going to leave this on that way. You know, that's pretty interesting. But there are other things we can also do with it to give variation in the beat, like this. By having it go through multiple octaves, or doing other things with it, my same beat pattern is changed up in a variety of different ways. Some which sound good and others which don't, but I keep the ones that I like and throw away the parts that I don't. It's all about being creative, you know? Now, I'm going to go down to my Kong, and uh, one technique I use is I select a basic drum kit to get the position of my beat, but then I may flip through other drum kits once that information is in there to get sounds that I like. And then, of course, I can use the advanced, uh, you know, drum synthesis effects on each drum and mold them into my own sound, you know? Don't have to stick with those presets if I don't want to. Let's see. I seem to uh, like this. Let's see, we'll try the changing the octave. I like this except that snare. It's a little bit sharp, isn't it? So we click on the snare. We can change the pitch. Ah, much better. And, uh, let's see. What else can we do? 
We can also change the decay on the amp envelope. Make it shorter or longer. And you notice it also has a built-in drum reverb. Isn't that great? So I'm going to give it a larger room. Maybe just change the compressor settings a little bit. Use my ears. Let my ears be the guide. That is the way. Because ultimately, what sounds best is best for your track. Yes, I'm getting some clipping there, so maybe I'll turn down the master level. I could also do that on the main mixer up here if I want. So that's pretty cool. Now what else can I do with our arpeggiator? Well, maybe the more obvious thing. Oh, while I'm down here, I have some various drums on the Octorex here. You know, it can be a nice complement to an electronic track to have an acoustic drummer playing along with it, you know, because there's a lot of crossover music that is happening right now. So, um, you know, where electronica and rock and roll and indie rock and hip hop and everybody, reggae, industrial, um, you name it, they're all working together to create uh, more interesting music for the 21st century where everything comes together. The singularity, as they say. Well, uh, of course, the singularity is not just about being singular, it's about infinite diversity. All sorts of different musical styles, but now I digress to musical philosophy or something like that. I'm going to turn it back. That's a nice breakdown. And you know you can automate these too. To give your song a good breakdown for the, uh, for the breakdown of the chorus. I seem to remember I like this one though. Now the great thing about Reason is anytime you want you can add in another device. And I've added in a Scream 4 distortion unit to get the sound of a classic if I don't want it to sound like a real drummer played it at all if I want it to sound sampled you know that lo-fi crunchy sound that you like in the past you can hear that crunchiness is coming through there yeah I'll turn on my damage control Now it's almost chiptune. That's a kind of interesting sound. I like just a little bit of crunch on those snares. So I guess we'll do that. But what really set it off is some reverb. And you notice, as you experiment with different things, you can set them on bypass. And you can turn them on and off. Now it sounds like a really lo-fi sampler. That's pretty cool. I'm micromanaging things. Don't get too stuck in the details. The last thing I'm going to do on this is to add a synth arpeggio as well. This is what arpeggiators are mainly meant to do.
now, again with the arpeggiator, I can simplify it by bringing that in a little bit. Pick out a nice bass. But, I want to make it more complicated. And you can do the same as variations in a single track. Now we've got that cool octave thing. I like that. We have our sort of lo-fi electro track built. And the next step I'm going to show you is adding reason. Just remember the arpeggio tricks that I showed you here. To make interesting breakdowns or snare rushes are variations in drumming. Mm -hmm. 